Do you ever feel like you're a little step behind those around you? Do you find yourself looking at other musicians and other artists in your local area, in your sphere, and feeling like you should be just as far as them, but you don't know what's holding you back and pushing them forward? Well, maybe there's a bit of marketing that goes in everything. Maybe there's some steps you can take to push you into the same stratosphere as those that you look up to and get you to that place where you wanna be in your career and get out there and play the shows and put out the music that you want to. Today, we're gonna to talk about some of those strategies. So let's have a think on that. Hello and welcome to the 145 Rural Podcast, where we are here to strengthen music careers and communities one song at a time. And now here's your host, Jacob Wing. Yay! Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode and today we're just going to break down 10 easy ways to boost up your career, boost up your numbers, get more followers, get more listeners, get more people behind you watching your shows, listening to music, all those kind of things and those are the steps that we can take that I know you're going to hear some of these and it's like, I'm not good at this, I don't like doing that and it's it's if you could just start the momentum on these, you know, do a little bit of research, watch some YouTube videos, you know, dig a little deeper and start doing these things. You'll start to see the results. And, and the main one, we're going to start with number one. And it's probably the most important one. It's the only one. If you don't do this one, none of it works. And I guarantee you, if there's somebody you look up to and if there's somebody that you you respect and if there's some level that you wish to achieve, they're doing this in some way. Either somebody behind them is doing this or they are personally doing this. And number one strategy when it comes to marketing that you can employ as a do-it-yourself do is stay consistent and stay persistent. Now, that sounds really simple, but I guarantee you need to hear it. I guarantee I need to hear it. I guarantee every musician out there in the world needs to hear this, whatever level you're on. It's so easy to get caught up in being okay with where you're at or you're making excuses instead of taking that next step, doing the extra practice, doing some extra writing, you know, it, or reaching out to other people to involve them in your music or be involved in their music. You know, all of those things are just easy to to not do and and you know, step away from those kind of things, but the thing is that if you're being consistent and you're finding ways to keep moving forward, those just kind of those opportunities move in front of you. They find a way to find you. And the number one reason you're going to find that people aren't getting the numbers that they should have, you can hear an amazing artist, go look them up and see how they're doing and find out that nobody's even heard of them. You know, they've got 100, 200 followers and they're just not getting the, the momentum that you think they should have because of what they're doing. And it's all because they're inconsistent. Go look at their, their social feeds, you know, go to Instagram you know, they're going to have sporadic posts once every month, once every two months. All those kind of things really start to add up and, and you can really just vanish into the void. If you aren't giving people a reason to see you in today's modern you know, culture, you're instantly forgotten. It's just the truth of the matter. And the way to get there is to be consistent, to be persistent. You want to be at some you're going to be annoying people. We have this fear of being that person that you know, oh, they annoy me, unfollow, I don't want to see this. That's fine, people are going to unfollow you. But if you're not being persistent and consistent, if you're not top of mind, if you don't, you know, pop up and they're like, oh, here we are again, what are they doing this time? Then you're following behind, you're not getting the traction that you should. And it all comes from being consistent and persistent. Let's move on to number two. Um, this kind of goes along with what I was just saying. And that's build a strong online presence. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are in your career. Even if you're just beginning, this is where you should be beginning. Uh, obviously, the music matters most. But let's be honest. If you want to take this to any other level than just hanging out in your bedroom or playing with a couple friends, online presence is super important. And you have to ask yourself, do I have a website? Does that website have an EPK where I can just point, you know, either promoters or booking agents or uh journalists, anybody that can just go look at this. Here's my EPK. Here's everything you need to know about me, my links, my videos, my music, all in one place for them. If you don't have that, you're not really going to be moving forward. That's something that's going to stop progress for your career. It's going to stop progress for you 
as a, in general as a whole. Um, you know, do I have consistency when it comes to my social stuff? Am I posting? Am I, you know, do I have a, any kind of stuff like that going on? And, uh, you know, if you don't have an online presence where people are hearing, you, you know, hearing you, seeing you, find a way to be a part of, of your journey, then it ain't going to happen. And that's just, I know it seems really straightforward and intuitive, but it's not. A lot of people miss this step. Um, ex, you know, other things you might be th not even thinking about. Uh, do you have a YouTube channel to post videos you take of you performing your music, your videos? Do you have, uh, you know, are you, are you Twitter? Do you have a Twitter? Do you have a SoundCloud? Are you for sure on all the, you better be on all the streaming services, but are you, you know, all those kind of things where people need to have access that want to invest their time, their energy, you know, you know, put their piece of soul into what you're doing. If you don't have that online presence, it just stops there. So that's a big, huge part of maybe that's why you're not moving forward. Maybe this is that marketing strategy you need. Let's talk about number three. And we're going to call that define your brand. And that goes again into as you're doing these things, as you're creating your online presence, this might not exist right away, but it'd be so, it should be something you keep in the back of your mind because it is very important. And as you're moving forward with creating one thing after another, you're creating a song and then you're creating artwork for that song and then you're creating an album and you're creating artwork for that album and then you're creating a a, uh, a website and you're creating your online presence with your Instagram and your Facebook and you need to start figuring out a way to create a theme between these you know it's a, now it's called developing your brand and is your brand developed uh, do you have can somebody go look at your feed and say you know there's some consistencies here and even more so can they just look at a photo or a video and see that on one of your your posts or on YouTube or something and just being like oh yeah that's that's so and so that's I, I know their stuff um, I've been following them for a while. You know, is there something that brands it as yours? It's very hard to just sit down and say, this is what it's going to be. But as you're going through things, you'll start to see, you know, you're using a certain color pattern or a scheme, or you like taking this kind of photo or making that kind of video. And that kind of becomes synonymous with you and your, your art and your work. And as you know, lean into those kind of things and, and that will become your brand. And I guarantee you, there's a lot of us out there not doing that right now. If maybe that's one of those things that's not getting your name out there, that's holding you back, why somebody might be doing a little bit better than you are because they've, you know, leaned into that. They've leaned into whatever their brand is, you know, a country artist going a little bit harder into their roots, into what makes them love their their home and, and everything about being, you know, a cowboy or having that Western life. Um, that's a really great example, especially where we live. We're in Montana. And, you know, it's a lot of our, our best artists you're going to see leaning into that because one, that's who they are and it's what people around here respond to. So, I mean, that brand sells, that brand brings people in. There's a reason people do it. Number four, and we've said this on many, many, many of our episodes and we'll continue to say it moving forward. Number four is collaborate with other artists. And it's so, so vital to moving forward in your career. And I, I really want to get this through to you because I don't want you to be like me. And this is definitely me speaking to myself, speaking to my former self, learning from my mistakes. And I want you at a younger age, or even if you're older than me and just haven't quite got out there, find a way to work with others and you will find a way to move forward. You will learn things you didn't think about. You will see things from perspectives that you've never considered. And you, if you're, if you're humble enough and you've been doing this long enough and you really don't care about you know, looking stupid or all of the superficial things and you're able to just open up and say, hey, how did you get here? I'm struggling in this situation. How did you achieve this? Reaching out to another person saying, hey, I see you're booked for a ton of shows this season. How did you do that? I've got four or five. You got up to you know, 20, 30, 40. How did you do that? What steps am I missing? What should I be doing next? And here's where I'm at. How do I get to what you're doing? If you're able to just take down that wall and ask those questions, you know, collaborating with others, it's going to move you so much farther forward than you ever would have gone without it. Um, you don't want to be that person sitting in their home, sitting in their bedroom, uh, be a moron like myself, build a studio and then just sit there by yourself and hope people come to you. It's not quite how the world works, but the more that you get to experience with others, 
play with them, learn their styles, you know, play their music, add to what they're doing, that grows you personally. So please take this to heart. It's a really big one. Moving on to number five. And uh, this one's going to be kind of touching upon a couple of the first ones we talked about, but it is uh, optimize your website for conversions and email lists. And there's a lot of us that aren't in this, this position yet, and that's okay. But keep it in mind, if you are making that, that website, maybe if you're doing a little bit of research on how to start marketing yourself, take a little bit of time to dig into how to create an email list or what it takes to create these, these conversions and, and lead magnets and all these things. You'll start hearing these terms. And the reason it's so important is that the more people that you can give your email, if, if you give away a free song and then they or a free album, your music free or whatever it is you have to offer and they just give your email, it seems like such a simple thing to give away, but there's a reason that when you go online and you try to do something, everybody's asking for yours for a reason. Direct marketing is the most valuable thing in our current economy. Being able to have a direct email, you know, have a weekly newsletter saying, here's what we're doing or a monthly release or just contacting people saying, hey, I know you haven't heard from me in a while, but guess what? Here's an album coming out. Here's a link and a date. You know, having that direct support is worth so much money. And I encourage you, if you can find a way to even do that, you know, you're getting bigger and you have a merch table, have some kind of tablet out there where they can enter their email for you so that they can begin contacted for upcoming show dates, upcoming releases, new merchandise, all those kind of things. Find a way to start building that list and, and getting that out there. And if you haven't done it, Start working it into your routine as you're doing a little research to look into it. It's a very, very deep subject, but if you can just chip away at it, then you'll feel comfortable when you're ready to do it. Hi there, and welcome to the ad break. We're just going to take a moment to let everybody know about our community of growing members. And if you'd like to be a part of that, just look at the info below and there will be a click there for an email sign up. Join in and get your voice heard. As well as you're enjoying this content, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the numbers 145 world. There you can join any of our groups and you can add to the discussion of what topics we will choose that will help you and hopefully future members of our groups, as well as join monthly Q&As and other such benefits. Again, that's patreon.com slash the numbers 145 rural, and we look forward to seeing you there. Now, back to that regularly scheduled episode and enjoy that content. Thanks again. Let's move on to number six. And again, this follows under that heading of duh, but some of us need to hear it. A lot of us need to hear it, I guess. Uh, but here's a big thing that a lot of people are doing. Number six, engage with your fans. And what we mean by that is if you go out and you take the time to play a show, even if it's out just playing like a farmer's market or, you know, in a brewery and you're just playing a one, two hour show, three hour show. And, you know, people drop off a couple tips. But if you have breaks in between, find a way to go and chat with the patrons who's around. There's always going to be people that are eyeing you. You can kind of tell that they have something more to say. Find a way to say hi and thanks for listening. Or especially if they drop you a couple dollars in your, your tip jar or your, your case or whatever it may be. Find a way to go say, hey, thanks. I saw you drop something there. That's really appreciated. I really thank you for that. It makes things so much better for me, you know, and then it could open this dialogue, this conversation, then they might buy an album of yours. You know, if you've got, you should hopefully be to that point where you have something to sell to them, to give to them. Um, and, and at this point, if you're not taking that time, if you're just getting your set done, walking away because you're an extrovert or you're sorry, you're an introvert and you don't have that extrovert in you, um, that needs to change. Just take it. Take it one step at a time. Like a lot of things, it's just easy if you say, all right, I've got a show coming up this weekend. I'm going to pick one person to talk to. Even if they come up to talk to me, that still counts. I'm going to go out of my way to take a little extra time and just talk to them about what's going on in their life, how they relate to my music possibly, and create that person that's going to be a lifelong supporter of you that wants to see you succeed, that will come to your next show. If they see you live, they're going to make that beeline to either drop a couple extra dollars in your case, in your tip jar, whatever it may be. 
or maybe even best case scenario, they go home, look up all that stuff. You've already done that work with the website, with the, you know, the streaming services or going to SoundCloud to hear your music. Finding a way to engage with fans is a huge, huge win. Number seven for strategies that we might use for marketing ourselves or our work. And this one is also something that a lot of people feel like they're not ready for. But I guarantee you, if you're doing something, if you're creating some kind of art, you're, you're in a position for this. Number seven is network with industry professionals. And that sounds really daunting. And it sounds like I'm ready. It sounds like we were talking to ourselves back in the, you know, the 90s, the 80s, the early 2000s. You know, we got to go out and, you know, pump the fists and we're going to get signed. We're going to do this. We're not talking about that kind of stuff, although it does happen, but we're not talking about that. Um, What we're really going into here is we're trying to say that Find a way to talk to people that are in the music community and the area you live. People, again, that are in your sphere of influence that you can connect with. People that are, you know, creating vlogs or blogs or doing journalist work with, you know, the written word. Uh, Any kind of, you know, journalist that's doing work with music, reach out to them with your work uh, and find a way to connect. Say, hey, would you want to do a piece on this? Would you maybe want to write something about it? Uh, usually you want to do this in advance. If this is your first time hearing this, again, do a little bit of research, but you want to get this to them prior to the release so that they can say some words. They like to have a little bit of access and have reasons for people to check out their work. You're working collaboratively with these people. Other people to connect with are, when you know, if you start trying to book things or getting promoters or those kind of things, you'll start hearing the certain names come up again and again. And as you hear that, There should be something going off in your head about, I need to talk to so-and-so. I've heard John's name come up every time I talk about booking a show here. Like, yeah, so-and-so got me, got me booked. They took care of me. They're really great to work with. All right, I need to reach out to this person. I need to talk to them. Find those names. Find the people that are helping others around them and become part of that. You know, find out what it is. Even if maybe you're not ready, just reach out and say, hey, I'm moving in this direction. What do I need to do to be useful to you that we could work together? I guarantee you that's going to help you push your career forward. Let's move on to number eight. And this kind of talks about engaging with your fans as we did with number uh, six. But number eight is offer merchandise and exclusive products. And again, your career can really stagnate because people don't have a way to recall what you're doing. Or maybe they're like, hey, I really enjoyed the show. I want to share it with a friend. They don't have a way to pass that on if you don't have some kind of, you know, music to for them to give. So if you haven't had a, an album at your show and they could have passed it on to a friend, that's another fan that you, like, by just connection, you know, Daisy chained on to another, another person, that's such a huge win. And a huge part of that, of course, is the more you can get and make by yourself and get people to do that uh, t-shirts are a great way that people start conversations of, Hey, nice shirt. Uh, is that a, a big band? Is that somebody local? Oh yeah. This is, this is the, the new band over. So, you know, I saw them on the corner. They were fantastic. You should check them out. They are wonderful. And then that starts to build that, that clout, that, you know, familiarity with your name, your product, what you're doing. Your, of course, it builds into your brand, as we talked about. If they're wearing your products, you know, they're putting your stickers up, whatever it may be. The more of these things that you can get out there, the more connections you make without having to be present. And then if they show up to a show, there's more reason for them to be even more invested. You know, it's just catering to this whole thing and building it up. And that's what a lot of people we can get overwhelmed, but these are just those small things that really add up. It's a ton of these just come together and create a fan base for you. Number nine, um, it's one that I put towards the end, but I really shouldn't have kind of thing. It's one of those ones that I find to be one of the most important and one that maybe it's, it's the most daunting and it's kind of uh, one of those ones that it's easy to get lost in and not doing. But if you want to create a fan base, move forward faster, it's one of the best ones. Number nine is create a compelling visual content. Um, this one is just kind of making videos. Make videos for your music. Find a way. If it's just you playing live, do it. If you can find a way to record your live shows uh, with the video, do it. Uh, my simplest one that I tell to everybody around me, take advantage of what you have around you. 
uh, and I'm meaning I'm talking about the outside nature, inside, whatever it may be. If there's something that is interesting and has movement, record it and just put either a lyric video over the top of it. If it's instrumental, just put that over the top. That's something that you can share on your social. That's something you can build your YouTube presence with. That's something that somebody can hear just passing by and be like, what is this? I want to hear more. And, you know, finding ways to get visual mediums out there is just so key to building any kind of career. And especially in modern, the modern uh, atmosphere we live in today, the modern culture we're dealing with, having visual components is by far one of the most important things. So that was number nine. We're on to number 10 and the, the last one. And of course, this one here is a little weird, but and I'm guarantee you're probably not thinking about it wherever you're in your stage of career. If you have a team around you, you're thinking about it. If you've been doing this for, you know, 10 plus years, you're doing this. But if not, it's not in your wheelhouse, but maybe it should be. And again, let's get right into that. Number 10, utilize data analytics for insights. Now, I guarantee you, even if you think you don't do this, you probably do this on some level. I guarantee if you're using Instagram or Facebook, you've gone in there and you've looked at what's my audience. If you you streaming and you follow, you know, how many monthly listeners do I have? What's my how many males and females? Where are they listening to? What country? What what city is the most listens coming from? If you're digging deeper into those numbers, then you're you're already winning. You're already got the idea of what's important. But as you're of course building your online presence, we've got this website, you know, you should be tracking all those numbers. Who's coming in? kind of conversions am I getting? If you have merchandise, how many people are buying merchandise? How many people are checking out, you know, certain pages? If you have a show update page, you know, is most of your traffic going there? Then that should tell you that you've got a huge live audience and a potential there. You know, it tells you where to focus your efforts and where maybe you're falling behind. And so the faster that you realize that something's a little bit on the back burner and you can move it a little bit forward, then you're not, you know, juggling these plates and plates are falling off. You're getting things done now because you're catching the numbers. You're seeing what's falling behind and you're leaning into, as we said with, you know, building your brand, lean into what's working. If you know that you have a mostly fail, female audience, find a way that what's working with that, lean into it. Or if you want to build the other side, think of why, how can I get more male listeners to, to match the number of female listeners? Then you kind of push that a little bit further forward. So all those kind of things you, you don't figure out without digging into the numbers. And one of the most annoying things, and also one of the greatest parts of living in this current culture we live in, in this modern society, is that there's analytics for darn near everything. So take a time to understand, take a time, take some time to understand that. And if again, if you need help, there's so many people on the internet, on YouTube, that will break down just how to analyze these numbers, what to make the most of them, where to invest your money, your time, and all of that, all of your effort. They can point you in a good direction and just go that route. So I hope these 10 ideas gave you some, some great fuel to, uh, to push you forward, to build that fire and make a, a, a conceited effort to grow your career, to grow your name, to grow your fan base, to grow your income so that you can keep doing more and getting better at this. So if you guys have any questions, please just let us know. We really appreciate your time. If you take a second, we'd love to have a, uh, have a subscribe from you. If you haven't subscribed or a like for the video always helps. Those things are so important. So please take a little bit of time for that. And we will see you guys on that next episode. And we'll see you then. Bye.